surgeon uh, plays an important role in the um, um, care of most patients with cancer, and uh, with the exception of patients who have a diagnosis of a blood cancer or leukemia, most patients um, uh, would require uh, a surgical opinion in terms of diagnosis. A lot of them would need to uh, have the tumor adequately staged, which means ascertaining whether the tumor is um, early enough so that it could be removed surgically or it is too advanced and requires alternative treatments. Sometimes it is not possible to remove the entire tumor because the tumor might be fixed. For example, there's a large breast tumor where um, it's unlikely that you would be able to remove it in, with a clear margin, in which situation um, administering radiotherapy or chemotherapy for, before the surgical intervention can increase the chances of having a clean reception. Well, when cancer is sitting still in one place, surgery is a great treatment for that. Radiotherapy is a good treatment too for cancer cells that are sitting still. But if you've got cancer that's traveling through the blood or moving to other parts of the body, surgery and radiotherapy really won't address that. And what you need is drugs. Now drug treatments for cancer have evolved enormously over the past few decades. Chemotherapy reflects probably the first stage of that development. And there are lots of other ways we can treat cancer with drugs that change the way it grows, such as hormone blocking treatments, and also a new group of drugs that are called targeted therapies. And what they're designed to do is get at what actually makes the cancer cell a cancer cell and try and switch off that growth using more subtle mechanisms. We also have drugs that affect the immune system and so they enhance the body's own ability to fight the cancer and they're called immunotherapies. So drug treatment for cancer has become much more complex and many patients will receive drugs from each of those categories as part of their treatment. Chemotherapy drugs interfere with the machinery of cell growth. They travel through the blood so they can affect cancer cells anywhere in your body. So if you've had surgery for cancer and there's some uh, concern that there may be still cancer cells in your body. Chemotherapy is often given after the surgery as a kind of mop-up. Sometimes when you come along with cancer it's actually too large to have an operation and you might have the drug treatment first to shrink the cancer down and make it easier to treat with surgery. Many chemotherapy drugs work only if you give them intravenously or directly into a vein and into the bloodstream. And so they're usually given in either a hospital or a chemotherapy clinic. What usually would happen is that you would come in for part of a day, you'd be greeted by the staff. Mostly chemo can be uh, given sitting up in a chair and people would wear their normal clothes and eat normally. While the chemotherapy is running, usually people feel fine. They would be sitting reading a book, perhaps watching a DVD, talking to their friends. Usually then you would go home and you'd have some instructions about what medications to take to keep you safe and control any nausea and your appointments to come back for the next dose. And that might be a week away, might be three weeks away. As well as having a much greater diversity of anti-cancer drugs now, we've also become much better at managing side effects. and so. Those old days when you'd expect to have your head in a bucket, I think really they're behind us. Anti-nausea drugs are routinely given if the chemotherapy has a significant chance of causing nausea. And if your hair's going to fall out from chemotherapy, that usually wouldn't happen for two or three weeks. Everything okay, Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Coming to chemotherapy can be pretty daunting. We've all seen movies from the past of people being really unwell with chemotherapy and it's fair to say that it's had a pretty bad name in the past. So we understand that you're likely to be frightened and need a lot of support. And that's why you'll find the staff who work in chemotherapy very understanding. They'll be able to help you with the information that you need and it's really critical that you ask questions about what's happening to you and that you make sure you've got enough information to help other doctors and nurses who might be involved in your care to help manage any side effects. So it's a time to speak up because you and your family are absolutely critical to your safety, 
doctors and nurses will do all they can, but they really need to work in partnership with you and your family. Radiation therapy is the use of x-rays to kill cancer cells. So normal tissues recover or repair x-ray damage much better than, than cancer cells. So that's why we break the radiation dose up into lots of small doses or fractions which are given every day. That gives the normal tissues time to repair and the cancer cells don't repair. So gradually over time we get more killing of the cancer cells and, and less damage in the normal tissues. Radiation treatment is used to cure cancers, to um, improve overall survival or to reduce the um, bad effects of cancers. Sometimes um, radiation can be used with a combination of chemotherapy. So basically chemotherapy go, usually goes into a vein or as a tablet and that's a treat everywhere in the body because it gets into the blood system. Radiation is a focused um, area of treatment so we can target high energy x-rays to the tumour and avoid treating other tissues outside that field. Sometimes if a patient's have had an operation, they've been able to remove the tumour if it's localised. We use radiation to mop up any cancer cells that might be left behind. Um, sometimes the tumour is wrapping around blood vessels in the area and the surgeon can't remove it safely, so we'd use radiation um, to treat the local tumour. So basically people are usually referred from the medical oncologist or the surgeon who they've first seen. Um, that first consultation is really getting to know the radiation oncologist so they can learn about your past history and, may, and, and see whether it's appropriate or not that radiotherapy should be used. Um, if it is appropriate, the next visit is usually called what we call a planning appointment. Now that's where we um, plan the radiation that involves in um, most times a CT scan with you in the treatment position. Um, and that's very important. So basically by doing that CT, we get a perfect um, outline of you in the treatment position. And so we can target the radiation beams to treat the local tumour and avoid treating the normal tissues around the edges. That appointment usually takes about 30 minutes and we do leave what's called a tattoo. Now sounds that can sound horrific, but it's basically a tiny little pinprick under the skin and that's so that every time when you come in for your radiation treatment, um, we can set you up in exactly the same position and you can shower normally through your treatment on a daily basis. Once that CT scan's been done, uh, the radiation oncologist and the radiation therapist, who are the technicians who help us with your treatment and will deliver your treatment, we spend about the next week uh, marking on carefully where the tumour is and designing beams to come in and treat that tumour. And so usually starting, I think, from one to two weeks after that planning appointment. Sometimes it's a five week course of treatment and treatment um, goes from Monday to Friday and each treatment takes about 15 minutes a day and most of that time is in setting up a patient in, in the correct position um, and the beam's only on for a couple of minutes. Um, basically if the beam is painless, you can't feel anything and it's very important to know that you're not radioactive. So most patients, it is outpatient treatment, so there's no special precautions that you need to take. Once the beam's off, there's no radiation, so you can go out and interact with the family and the community as normal. Um, in terms of side effects of treatment, again, because we're, it depends on where the, doc, the radiation oncologist is targeting the beam, the common side effects are tiredness to the point where you might want to go to bed a bit earlier. And then all the other side effects are very much localised to the area where the beam's being targeted. So some people can get some nausea, um, diarrhoea, but that's less common. Um, and usually some maybe some mild redness of the skin. It's very uncommon to need to come into hospital because of uh, side effects from this sort of treatment. And it's very important to know that each person's uh, case, their treatment's individualised. So sometimes radiation won't be appropriate. Um, and in other cases it will be. Um, and that's very much uh, focused on the, that, that particular patient's needs and, and taking into account also their previous medical history.